Okay, everyone. Places. Places. The Dark Cut. Hello, viewers, listeners, fans of The Cut Up in the Dark Hours. This is The Dark Cut. Hello. This is The Cutter. And this is Greg from The Dark Hours. And tonight, we're covering The Woman. Yes, Lucky McKee's The Woman. Wow. Wow. Big stuff. Hmm. Before we get into that, what have you been watching lately, Cutter? What have I been watching? Hmm. Well, uh, as I mentioned last week, I've been watching the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. Hmm. Just got through part two, Secret of the Ooze. Yeah. The candid appearance by Vanilla Ice. Yes. I I really, I, that's a good favorite of mine. I, I really like the, the middle part where he's like, it's a little quiet, a little too quiet. A little, it's, little too rap. <laughs> it's a little too rap. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's really good. I was I, laughing because I went on the IMDb, IMDb message boards for that, mm-hmm. and there was somebody who was overanalyzing that joke. They're like, why is that even funny? Yeah. I'm like, really? Like, you forget it. What have you been watching? Um, I have been watching a number of horror movies. Uh, I've been getting my girlfriend into horror. And, uh, Uh-oh. yeah, this is Killer Have Cam. anything to do with locking her in the basement, chained up? Uh, no. Uh, oh, okay. No, not like locking her up and raping her repeatedly or anything like right, that. Right, right. Not like no. in the movie. No. Okay. No, I've been, uh, I started off nice and easy with Beetlejuice. And, uh, Classic. Yeah, she was a little disappointed. She's like, "Man, really? Like, yeah, what the hell? Like, show How me some." You'd be heart. disappointed with that. Well, she was. She wanted like blood. She's oh, like, "Give okay. me, give me something real." Gotcha. So, did I follow it right up? I think I followed it right up with Inside. That's, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what can I show? I was like, no. Oh yeah, yeah. Then we saw Final Destination Five. That's okay, what it was. Okay. And then she was like, "Okay, that's good. That's good. I want some. I want some more. Give me some more." Has she seen the previous movies? She hasn't five? seen any of them. Wow. She's new. Like, every time I go, have you seen this? She's like, no, no, not really. So, went straight for the juggler, showed her inside. Uh, Lentier, and, How'd she uh, feel about that? She loved it. Really? Loved it. You got a freak. Yeah, I, it was great. I <laughs> you mean, might want to chain her up in the basement. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. So then last week, I showed her The Mist, and again, she freaking loved it. Wow, so cool. We're working our way up towards The Thing, which, of course... Well, if you've already shown her inside, I mean... Yeah, well, The Thing's my favorite, and we're going to be seeing the prequel to The Thing very shortly here, so... Yeah, next month. Yeah, very exciting. Wow, not even next month. It's like two or three weeks away, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's almost wow. Halloween 2011. Can't wait. It's very exciting. But, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm showing her that type of stuff. I'm not sure uh, what else to show her. Um, haven't showed her Martyrs yet. Uh, that, that might... Uh... Well, if she liked Inside, I'm sure she'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> now, have you seen Martyrs? You know I haven't. It's got a death curse! We're going to have to get to that another time. There Crazy Ralph letting us know it's time to talk about the woman. All right, so take us it away. Ah... Uh... I'm not sure where to touch this one. <laughs> well, I feel filthy all over. Well, let's start. Um, I haven't seen the original or the first movie, but this is actually the a supposed uh, prequel. Yeah, I guess the the first movie, which nobody. I mean, I it's called I the like, Offspring, correct? Yeah, I feel like nobody's really actually like not very many people have seen this movie. It was a Ghost House Pictures or a Ghost House Underground uh, movie, so it was in the second wave of that feature i think it was the second wave okay and uh, that's the the kind of the picture the the producing pictures labeled set up by sam raimi and rob taper and everybody should know who that is obviously and it's not very good is what i hear it's about a, a group of feral you know tribe of feral kids or you know teens that eat flesh and they fight this you know the uh, uh, suburban family and there are survivors at the end of the movie okay and that leads us into the woman so they weren't fighting the band the offspring no no the we band, don't have to keep them separated no i think they're pretty lame okay. no, yeah that, lame talk about wow. lame that was a bad wow. joke so what's the woman about wow what is it about well it's about a psychotic man who has this really strange tight grip over his family while hunting one day he finds a feral woman that for some reason, well, we know why, Lust, decides to chain up in his basement. Uh, And he pretty much subjects his family to it to help him uh, 
become quote unquote civilized in mm-hmm. his eyes. He wants to civilize her. Yeah. And uh, it started off. Well, okay. Pretty strange. Let, let's just say that the the plot started off kind of you know you're like they're acting like it's a normal family. Sure, sure. And you're getting kind of touches of you know this might be weird, and it just go it just keeps getting weirder, and you keep getting worse and worse vibes from them, and. But yeah, the movie starts off insanely weird. We, we weren't even sure what to think of it because the first two to three minutes is like this weird montage of growls and things yeah. that the woman is doing, like running in the woods. And, and, and weird camera angles. Yeah. Uh, so this is Lucky McKee. Uh, for those of, of you that aren't familiar, Lucky McKee started off with Angela Bettis in a movie called May. It's about a girl who is an outcast and she decides to, she goes crazy and starts killing people to create a custom friend of hers. It's, um, a lot of people like to, you know, say, have you seen May? You know, it was almost like a kind of an indie cred thing, right? Okay. Like, I've seen May. Have you seen May? That's awesome. Check out May, you know. You haven't seen May? You're a faggot. Yeah, you you suck. I've seen May. It was good. I mean, it it wasn't the best movie I've ever seen. It was... You know, it's one of those movies that you see and you're like, wow, that was good. And you feel, you know, because it's something you discover. Right. But after a while, everybody knew about it and it wasn't cool anymore. Oh, it's one of those movies. Yeah. Like yeah. Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's really I, funny at first. And then everyone's like, eh, everyone else likes yeah. it. Good movie. Um, and Angela Bettis is great. I love Angela Bettis. If you've seen the remake of The Toolbox Murders, she's the lead star in that. Mm-hmm. And if you've seen any Lucky McKee movie, she's probably going to be the in lead in every movie. <laughs> so, I think she's a pretty lady, too. And, yeah, she's got a certain unusual beauty. Yeah, she's unique. Yeah. So, uh, Lucky McKee movies have been May. He followed that up with The Woods, which was infinitely delayed and delayed for years. Uh, it frustrated the hell out of me. He also had an episode of The Masters of Horror called Sick Girl. Mm-hmm. I again, remember that one. Yeah. Again, had um, Angela Bettis and uh, what's her name? Misty Monday? <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, her name's Misty Monday. Two very oddball characters in yeah, that one, though. Yeah, um, or Aaron Brown, if you choose to call her that. Uh, what do you call soft pork cor- soft, soft core porn. Soft pork corn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I think it's a Halloween also, treat. Yeah, yeah, soft pork corn, which you is really, really mm, awesome. Tasty. Yeah. She also starred in another one of Jack Ketchum's movies. So, you know, you, they always work together. And uh, his movies are always a little bit off. They're always a little strange. Yeah. Um, they got something about them that just doesn't feel, I don't want to use the word normal, mm-hmm. but just off kilter. Which is, I think, part of his appeal. Mm-hmm. Um, and talking about appeal. Well, he aims to shock. I mean, yeah. that's really his thing, right? And when we're talking about, well, I don't think so. I, no? I don't think Lucky is keying. And well, he definitely wants to push the envelope, though, right? I don't think so. No? I, I mean, maybe push the envelope of like um, I mean he, all his movies are, are unusual mm-hmm. but if you want to talk about shock and pushing the envelope I, I think that definitely brings to mind his collaborator in the film Jack Ketchum Jack Ketchum tell us about Jack Ketchum Jack Ketchum the author of everything scary and weird with this world I know every book is about raping people and killing people and dad's gone crazy and his most normal one is about a man who is a uh, uh, old who grew old with his dog, and some youngsters come over, kill his dog, and he gets revenge for his dog. That's probably his most normal book, mm-hmm. and that even ends in like craziness and blood, and which is I'm sensing a pattern. Every Jack Ketchum movie that I've seen in the third act go just goes back, just to goes crazy. nuts. Yeah. yeah, I mean. What do you think? Do you think do you like Jack Ketchum? Is is he an acquired taste? It's definitely an acquired taste. You're not gonna like it if you're not into being depressed. Yeah. Because <laughs> every time you watch one of his uh, movies, based on you know, it's you're gonna feel a little filthy afterwards. And I've noticed that each one has very some very central. Excuse my French. Fucked up character. Yeah, definitely. In fucked every up. movie. Yeah. And this one was no exception. No difference. So yeah, we should probably get into that. The, mm-hmm. the dad. What the fuck was going on with this guy? So total small town. Like he he reminded me of maybe like a John Wayne Gacy or something. Yeah. You know, small town guy that yeah. everyone in town seems to really admire, or at least he's comes yeah. off that he's uh, successful. You know, he's a lawyer. Or the BTK killer where he sure. looked normal. 
Uh. But but on the inside at home, he's a psychotic rapist slash killer slash misogynist. And you mentioned uh, a lot of Jack Ketchum's or some of his movies have been period pieces. Mm -hmm. And at first I thought that was what this was. Yeah, it came off like that at first. The morals, the the mores in the family really felt outdated by the way. Uh, you, you can tell right away something's kind of weird. Angela Bettis as the mom is very meek, and she's obvi- there's ob- obviously some type of abusive relationship going on there. And you start seeing that unfold. What did you think about the soundtrack? The soundtrack, now, <laughs> I, I love the songs that were in the movie. I'm not familiar with most of the bands or, or the songs that were in it, but I, I like them. However, where they're placed in the movie, that's kind of strange. I mean, my favorite song in the movie takes place during a rape scene, and I'm just like, yeah. "Oh my god, am I gonna f- think about this every time I hear this well, song now?" Or they are good songs. Yeah, I, I was like, "Wow, these are good." I was songs. kind of digging them, you know. And then um, I'm like, "I'm not really digging what's going on in the movie, though." I, I just don't. They don't belong in the movie. No, they they don't belong in the movie. Like it, it's where it's where indie music and and film uh, creating, you know, meets you know just this drastic crazy story. I don't know if like it was this a it was this like necessary I mean like he couldn't afford a score or because I would have thought a score would have been a lot more appropriate for this type of movie I feel I think a lot of the uh, the movies that uh, are based on Jack Ketchum's novels uh, are, are kind of low budget mm-hmm. but if not no budget at all yeah and uh, I mean they do what they can with the music so so I, I mean, assume they got them from a bunch of bands who you know mm-hmm. probably aren't that well known this might have been necessity I mean Personally, I would I could have done without any type of contemporary dating dated music because sure. in five ten years this music's gonna be dated right amazingly dated I mean it already was I I just I didn't it didn't sit well with me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're already at our uh, warning toward the end. So let's just put it straight. Um, this is from Lucky McKee himself uh, when he says this movie. You guys have all seen or if you haven't, there's this YouTube video of this guy freaking out over this movie. And and just saying it's the most offensive thing he's ever seen. Mm -hmm. Well, from Lucky McKee himself, he says uh, it's designed to incite feelings of fear, shock, nervousness, dismay, anxiety, and disgust. It is designed to make you question what it is to be civilized, what it is to be feral, and all the shades of gray in between. Uh, He goes on to basically say it's uh, his intent is to shock with this movie. Do you think he succeeded? Uh, at times, yeah, I, I would say so. Was this a good movie? Hmm, that's a hard question. I I feel as though uh, I I enjoyed watching it once. I don't think I ever need to see it again. I don't know that I enjoyed it. I really was like, it, it's not just that it made me uncomfortable. I just was, it was so odd. Yeah, and I felt like these characters didn't really exist. Well, the placement of the soundtrack that we mentioned, too, it also made it hard to feel exactly what you probably should be feeling during the, the scenes, you know? Yeah. Playing a happy sort of rock or punk song during a rape scene really doesn't make me feel too bad about what's going on, you know? Or another scene where one of the characters is, is dwelling on their current situation in life and you have this kind of angsty song going on that just doesn't incite the feelings that it's supposed to. Yeah, it doesn't know? fit. Um I don't know. I, I, do, I, I can't recommend this to anybody. I don't know why it's getting such accolades. I don't know why either. I mean, to be honest, I, I feel the same way about this that I did about Antichrist, you know. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like there's some there's some feminist uh, levels we could be talking about. Oh, yeah, about. There's, some, there's some undertones there for sure. You know, that's fine and good, but... Hey, I'll swallow your soul! I'll swallow your soul! I'll swallow your soul! <laughs> swallow this. Well, let me just... Let me just leave it at the fact that the woman is going to divide audiences. It's Definitely. a divisive film. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure it did what it was supposed to do or yeah. what it was intended to do. But, uh, yeah, check it out. You're going to anyway, so yeah, check it gonna out. Yeah, you're going to watch it. There's that freak show appeal. So, yeah. But personally, yeah, I, I agree with you. I wouldn't really recommend it. So, Cutter, how the can they find you? Well, thecutup.net and twitter.com slash thecutup. People, I need followers. Come on. Yeah. Follow us both. You can find me at The Dark Hours on Twitter and Gray The Dark Hours on Facebook. If you want to get in touch with the show, The Dark Hours, it's thedarkhours at mail.com. Leave a voicemail at 866-362-5588. All right, everybody. That's it for us. Keep those women quiet in the basement and talk at you later. See you later.